welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at 17D graphs of the derivative function. We start off by looking at increasing and decreasing functions. Increasing function really just means that it's like we're climbing a mountain and we're going uphill. So um, if we take two points, any two points, x2 is greater than x1. And at these two points, the corresponding y value, so y2 is also greater than y1. And we say that this function is strictly increasing. And if a function is strictly decreasing, we still take two points, x1 and x2. Clearly, x2 is a greater value than x1. However, the corresponding y values, we have y1 is greater than y2. So in that case, we say that um, this function is strictly decreasing. But if you just look at the graphs, then strictly increasing, it's like we're climbing a mountain, we're going uphill, and strictly decreasing is that we're going downhill, it's sliding down. All right, in this example, we have a cubic function and we want to find, um, so find the value of x such that the derivative function is greater than zero. So that's what the question means. We want to find x values when the derivative function is greater than zero. All right, so this graph is the original function. So that's the cubic function. And to solve question A, we ask, in which interval is x increasing? Now, it is clear that um, the graph is increasing during this interval. So when x is between x is equal to negative 1 and when x is equal to 5. So using the right notation, we say that, so we want to find x values when the function is strictly increasing, the derivative function. Um, this is equal to, so when x is between negative 1 and 5, our derivative function is strictly increasing. Um, using set notation, we can write this as a negative 1 and 5. The reason why we use um, round brackets here is because when x is equal to negative 1 and 5, we have stationary points. So these two points are actually stationary points. And we know that at stationary points, the derivative function is equal to 0. And that's why we do not include these two values, hence we don't use um, a square bracket. So be very careful. All right. And in question B, we want to find when is the derivative function less than 0. So when are we sliding down? So we're sliding down here and also here. And using set notation, we know that when x, uh, when x is less than negative 1 and when x is greater than 5. Okay. All right. Putting set notation is from negative infinity to negative 1. Again, remember that should be a round bracket because this is a stationary point. And from 5 all the way to positive infinity. And in question C, we want to find the value of x such that the derivative function is equal to 0. We already said in part A, at these two stationary points, um, the derivative function is equal to 0. So we can just say that um, the answer is negative 1 and 5. So at these two values, these two stationary points, the derivative function is equal to 0. Okay, moving on. Uh, in this example, we want to sketch the graph of the derivative function for each of the following. Um, and it's impossible to determine all features. So we'll just try our best to draw um, the derivative functions. Okay, so in part A, we have a parabola. And we know that the derivative function will be a linear. And also when x is equal to 3, which is the turning point, the gradient of the derivative function will be 0. So on the left, our graph is decreasing. And on the right hand side, our graph is increasing again. Um, so to draw this, it's going to be a straight line, a linear function. And the x-intercept is when x is equal to 3, which is the turning point on the parabola. All right, in the second question, it's a linear function. We know that for a linear function, the gradient is the same at any point along this line. So it's a horizontal line with a gradient of 1. Um, as you can see here, we have point zero, 1 and point negative 1, 0. So if we try to find the gradient, we say that the gradient is 1. So um, in this case, we can just draw a straight horizontal line at, x, um, at y is equal to 1 and say that this is the derivative function f dash of x. I should label this first one as well. So that's f prime of x. 
All right, in question C, this is a cubic function. As you can see, we're increasing first on the original um, graph. So that means the derivative function will be increasing as well. So it's going to be straight, strictly increasing. So we're increasing first, and um, so we start off positive above x-axis. And at x is equal to negative 1.5, it starts to decrease. And this is also when um, the x-intercept um, occurs. So that's why after this point, it's below the x-axis. And oops, that's not a perfect graph. Let me try again. Okay. Right. And slowly becoming less negative. So we're decreasing, decreasing, but it's becoming less negative. So that's why we're back to um, the positives. And also the x, the second x-intercept is at x is equal to 1. Keep in mind the x-intercept occur at these two stationary points. Okay, so it's a little messy. But um, as you can see, the screen parabola is our derivative function f prime of x. So now we consider, what if we have an angle associated with the gradient of a curve at a point? How do we solve this type of question? Now we want to find the coordinates of the points of the curve with this equation at which the tangent line makes an angle of 45 degree with the positive direction of the x-axis. So this implies that when the gradient is equal to 1, what are the coordinates? So we essentially want to find the coordinates of the point at which the tangent line makes an angle of 45 degree with the x-axis. The first step is still to find the derivative function, the dy over dx. This is equal to 2x minus 7. If the graph makes an angle of 45 degree with x-axis, this implies that the gradient is equal to 1. Um, that's because, so 10, 45 degrees is equal to 1. Now let's set this derivative function to be 1. So 2x minus 7 is equal to 1. I'm going to plus 7 on both sides. Gives us 2x equals 1 plus 7 equals 8. And if we divide 2 on both sides, we have x is equal to 4. If we're subbing x equals 4 back into the original function to find the corresponding y value, y is equal to 4 squared minus 7 times 4 plus 8, which is a negative 4. So we say that um, the coordinates is 4 comma negative 4. At this point is when the derivative function makes um, a 45 degree angle is the positive direction of the x-axis. Okay, part b. When the tangent line is parallel to the line y is equal to negative 2x plus 6, um, if it's parallel, the gradient is the same as the linear function, which is negative 2 in this case. So we essentially need to set this equation, our derivative um, function. Let me just rewrite. dy dx is equal to 2x minus 7. We just need to set this to be negative 2 and solve for x. Again, plus 7 on both sides. We have, have 2x is equal to negative 2 plus 7 equals 5. And x is equal to 5 divided by 2. We can just write this as a fraction, 5 over 2. To find the corresponding y value, we're going to sub this back into the original equation. So y is equal to 5 over 2 squared minus 7 times 5 over 2 plus 8. Um, we found that y is equal to negative 13 over 4. So we say that at this point on the curve, the tangent line is parallel to this linear um, function. All right. So in this question, part A, we want to find the direction of motion when the x value is 2 and 3. So direction of motion essentially means to find the angle the function makes with the x-axis. So it's pretty similar to the previous question. The first step is always to find the derivative function. So let's find that. So dy dx is equal to quarter times 4. x 4 minus 1 equals 3 and 2 thirds. Um, times 3 x to the power of 2 and that's cancelled we have x cubed plus 2 times um, x squared 
Right, so that's our derivative function. And now when x is equal to 2, the derivative function is equal to 2 cubed plus 2 times 2 squared, which is equal to 16. Now to find the direction of motion, in other words, um, the angle, we'll have to use inverse 10. Let's draw a triangle. So in order to find this angle um, the graph makes with x-axis, we need to find angle theta. We know 16 can be written as 16 over 1. Opposite over adjacent. Um, to find theta, we need to find the opposite of 10, 16. Okay. And using CAS, you can find that um, theta is equal to 86.42 degrees. All right, so this is the direction of motion. In other words, the angle it makes with x-axis. Okay, in part two, when x is equal to 3, the derivative function is equal to um, so 3 cubed plus 2 times 3 squared. This is equal to 45. To find theta, we need to find inverse 10 of 45, and this is equal to 88.73 degree. So you can do this on your CAS. So in part B and C, we can do them together. When the gradient is equal to 1, this means we need to set our derivative function to be 1. So x cubed plus 2x squared is equal to 1. So we can take away 1 on both sides. Then we have x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now let's solve for x. So you can solve this using your CAS. Um, so if you go menu 3, 1, solve, and solve for x, you'll find the x values. But in this case, we can do this by hand as well. So if we factorize x plus 1 out, um, because negative 1 is a factor, then we have um, x squared plus x minus 1 left. So for x plus 1, we have x is equal to negative 1. And solving this quadratic function, we find that x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus square root 5 over 2. And in this case, we don't take negative values. So we conclude that the x value can only be um, negative 1 plus square root 5 over 2, which is approximately 0 0.62. All right, I hope you find this video helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.